good evening everyone and thank you so much for joining in let's let's start the event i will now hand it over to ivon who would go ahead and uh, let you know more about uh, you know the speaker we have and uh, all right good evening everyone welcome to the webinar my name is ivon i'm a program manager for ug india once again welcome and thank you all for joining us for the webinar I'm here to figure out BBA with IFIM together with all of you. So today we are truly honored to have Professor Deepu Krishna here with us, who will be enlightening us about BBA. Well, I was asked to introduce him. And to be honest, I don't know where to begin from, as his list of achievements is pretty long and commendable. Nevertheless, I will give you a quick brief about him. Professor Deepu Krishna is the Director of SSO and International Collaborations at IFIM Institution in Bengaluru. He's also an Associate Dean and an Associate Professor at IFIM School of Law. He has done his BA LLB honors from National Law Institute in Bhopal, followed by LLM in Corporate Law from Jagran Lake City University, and is currently pursuing PhD from Amity University. He's also a postgraduate gold medalist in law, PhD scholar inclined towards mentoring and management. So over to you, Professor Deepu Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so Welcome much. Welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, sweet introduction. And uh, welcome to each one of the students and parents and everyone who's attending this session. Um, I, I do this, uh, you know, this act of uh, giving a thank you to all of you who attend the session before the session starts, just because of one thing, because I really admire the fact that people take out time and sit through a session where one person does the talking and he talks about various uh, things which he has gone through or he preaches things, etc. What I do is I try that I do not do the same. Rather, I talk about few uh, experiences of my life which made me realize things as they were because if you see the way my career graph looks like I was a lawyer I was practicing with the Supreme Court Delhi High Court that's how I, I got campus place but then somehow you know uh, uh, teaching happened to me with which I was doing part-time and teaching became so contagious to me that I started realizing that when you start teaching you always are on the winning side but when you are uh, into litigation you may always have a losing side and you know that, that that's a theory which probably hit me hard uh, other than that i should say that teaching is a it's one of those jobs which has a lot of uh, uh, job satisfaction, I would say. And given that with the law graduation, which I did, I also got a lot of, you could say, the, the kind of pull which law gave me, gave me a lot of leadership skills in me. So right from the start, when I began teaching, I was not just teaching, I was also into management and that to upper level management, which has all, all only helped me a lot. Now, about uh, management studies, there is something which which is very core to my heart because right at the age of uh, when I was just 26, I started handling national operations of a huge brand. And that's when I never thought that I have it in me to manage things. But then because it was a great opportunity because I was very young at that age, it just happened that I started doing things which a management student would have done, right? And that is when my interest in management studies grew. I was a commerce student. So in my 11th and 12th, I did my commerce and I knew what is economics. I knew what is, uh, you know, what, what is the meaning of, meaning of marketing. Uh, those sales, I had no idea. So I'm talking about a few things which you would be very, very alien to, but now soon in a, in a, in a matter of few years, you will be talking just like me and you'll be wondering what all these things are. And that's exactly how life changes. And my entire effort in this lecture for the next one hour would be to make sure that you guys realize what I could not. It Because life taught me, you know, I did not go to a management school to, school to learn it, but then life taught me these things. And that's how I learned. Now I look at some students, they all want to do BBA and then they want to go ahead and do MBA. I often ask them, do you know what is taught inside a B school or else when you go to a, a management school, what exactly is management? How many wings it is uh, you know, divided into? Do you have those skills in you that you are going to become a great manager or else someone who can become an entrepreneur or someone who can become a great marketer? And it pains to me when I say in a group of 10, nine students have no idea about it. They're like, 
okay, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out. But believe me, the kind of competition which is happening and the kind of natural talent which is slowly coming into what you call as, uh, you know, in, into the market, it is very, very important for the students of your age to be way ahead. I have to confess one thing, that students of your age are much ahead of us in matters of intelligence when it comes to, you know, to the generation gap which we have amongst each other. So I, I, I often use this uh, example when I talk to, 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 to students that a 60 year old person today might be struggling with a Android phone. You know, he might be struggling to understand how it works. But you can see small kids aged about four or five, they know exactly which game to download from the Play Store. They'll go, they'll, they, they'll go to the Play Store, they'll install it and they'll start playing it. What is happening to humanity? We are evolving, right? And yes, that's why our mortality rate is also, you know, it, it's showing up that people are dying young. Now, what is happening is also very, very much visible in the market. If you see the kind of products which are coming out, the city, Bangalore, to which I belong to, every now and then you can see a great startup coming up. And it is changing the, the lives of people. Who are these people who are coming out with these startups? You might have seen Shark Tank, a great series which was aired on the on the television. Believe me, if you if you did not see, you can even go and go to the YouTube and see it. You should see the way people are thinking, the, the innovative concept which is they are coming. And we should feel proud about them, but then we should also realize that we are backwards even in those terms. Because if you go to China, China is much ahead of us in those terms. And you can see that the world is shrinking. It's shrinking so much that soon, as I keep telling my son, that go ahead and start learning Mandarin or as Chinese. You know why? Because I think it's going to be very important. The way Chinese are taking over the entire world, not with just their debt, uh, you know, their debt system, but many other systems, they're taking over the world. And for sure, I, I keep telling him, for sure, tomorrow your boss can become a Chinese or else your business partner is going to be a Chinese and you'll have to handle with them. Because in Africa, people have already started speaking Chinese. Africa is a, as when I used to take general studies, I used to tell students also that Africa is one of the richest, it's one of the richest continents in the world. But then poverty is something which you could see there because most of these big countries are going and exploiting them because probably that country and its people, that continent and its people are not in touch with the times, except for South Africa and some other parts. You know? And Chinese have even taken over Africa, they have taken over all parts of the world. The world is shrinking. The world is going on a very different platform. It's not just Elon Musk. There are many more people who are changing the, the way we think. Now, how to go about it is something which we're going to discuss, for which I'll use a small PPT, which I'm carrying so that, you know, you all have an idea about what I'm speaking about. And uh, we'll just share it with you. Yeah, I hope uh, it's visible to each one of you. So I normally call this as conversations with the with the leaders of tomorrow, the future of India, because don't take it as a lecture. This is basically a conversation which I try to strike with each one of you, where I try to explain that, please, your next step is going to be very, very important. And when you take that next step, be very careful about, think about 18 to 20 years down the line. That's exactly how you should be taking it. So before I start, I need to be very sure about we are able to connect with each other. You are able to know that I understand and I was in your shoes you know, in some, some years back. So I know that you're going through a dilemma, which is called as what to do dilemma, you know, where to go, what to do, what course is something made for me? Is this career option made for me? Uh, I play cricket well, should I pursue it? Um, I'm, I'm good at music, so should I become a DJ? Uh, I make great vlogs, should I continue? Uh, because I've started uh, earning through YouTube, should I do? And going through all this, you also go through some traumas or some, 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 some pressures. Uh, namely these pressures called as parents, they love you a lot. They care for you a lot and they want to make sure that you get the best in the life. You would be a very good student who will be studying the entire night, but yet, but yet there can be circumstances where they keep on telling you just one thing, keep studying, you have to keep on studying. This way it won't work. You have to shine, you know, right? And, uh, you know, I don't blame them if you ask me. The reason is your life starts with school, coaching, friends, uh, badminton classes, squash classes, and it ends there, right? But they are the ones who are in the market, just like me. You know? They are the ones who are feeling the bus. They are the ones who are who, who could see the way things are changing. 
you know they, they they could see the way people are coming out with business concepts which are basically making sure that people are losing out on their jobs you see that's the kind of uh, pressure which they can see and worst of all there could be times when they can see the hierarchical positions in every office in every corporate structure is also changing and there could be times when they just lose their mind and go ahead and yell at one of their subordinates or as they get yelled by their superior you know who's the first person who comes into their mind just when this happen it's always always you the reason is they start thinking about what if tomorrow the same happens to my child remember anyone can in, you know in, in the world they can call you 10 numbers of synonyms they can call you ghada they can call you idiot they can say everything about you but the moment someone else says the same about you they are the ones who are always hurt and just because of that reason just because of that reason they cannot they cannot even fathom the fact that someone tomorrow may yell at you like this where are you going to be in the social structure or the corporate structure how much are you going to earn oh my god what is going to happen and that pressure is something which they come and transfer over to you as i said even if you are a good student the second is peers our friends right uh, the famous uh, dialogue from the movie three idiots where they say that when uh, you know when you are doing you when you are not doing well it's okay but when your friend starts doing much better than you that's exactly when you start feeling the pain you are like are you afraid if he gets ahead in life what would i do personal yes your girlfriends and then you know we always have this sharma aunty varma aunty or someone in our colony who's more interested in our studies than, than, rather than the own and i'm going through all these pressures i just want to tell you one thing which i'm a great pioneer of and i've been taking a lot of sessions pan india and many schools where i tell students guys everything will be all right at the end you just need to build up on your skills and you just need to have focus because such kind of pressure is also making sure that students are breaking up one of those reasons is also because students are not able to understand that what kind of a personality they are what kind of skill sets have they acquired and that is something which is very different from from our parents we may get their facial features we may get the way their sound etc etc but that cannot be something through which you can you can be someone who can be judged that if a if a father is a judge the son also needs to be a judge if the father is an engineer the son also needs to be an engineer because as i said the social structure and the economic structure of our country and the world is changing so to judge a person from the same scale is something which is very very bad yeah i can tell you one thing one thing which is not changing against which i have i'm i'm running an entire campaign is the examination system the examination system during our parents was also the same the examination system during our time is also the same and remember this pandemic was something when i literally wrote a letter to cbsc calling them that you are a bunch of people who could have done you know and except you could have done something really new innovative because this is exactly exactly the time and we could have reason about everything else and created a new examination system where the student could have come up and he could have performed and you know one question paper for the for all the students of india that's not how it is done right for the board exams etc it should be something where a student realizes so i'm still working on it today in the daily guardian i've also written an article but that's just for law school but i think the examination system where it just focuses upon the rote learning has to you know has to change and i believe yes slowly it is changing for good um and that is something where 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 i think that you should not put such kind of a pressure on you and even if there is pressure you should not break in it rather just focus on what i am going to say in 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 this slide you have to understand that there is no student as in, even when i take a class uh, people often come and ask me what is a, as in, i'm a very famous uh, teacher in my uh, wherever i have taught you know getting great feedbacks from the students i love my students now people come and ask me what do you do inside the class and i go and tell them that it's very simple there are different kinds of personas sitting inside my class there are different different types of students sitting inside my class and for me there is no one student who's poor student or good student for me there are a bunch who are very different so a student who's good as per the you know as per the definition of many faculties and teachers i need not prepare the class for him because he is someone who will grab everything because that's his persona he is prepared for it he comes and he 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 just needs a, a direction i just need to say certain things and he'll grasp it and he'll go and research but there could be certain students inside the classroom who'll sit and who need interesting things 
or something which literally titillates their brain cells to catch these things. And believe me, I always, and they are the challenges whom people refer to as poor students, and they are the challenges for us. And believe me, I prepare my classes specifically for those students. I make it a point that when I go walk into that classroom, I'm able to talk to them and make sure that I teach them because I know those students whom people call as good students are already impressed because if they are your challenge, you literally make the class awesome. You go one grade up and you are creating it in such a manner that these students are also happy and they also have your attention. And that is something through which I have devised a kind of a, what you call as a, as, a, as a persona of students where you you, you yourself can you know decide that where you are. It could be a combination of three to four. And this is exactly what is going to be very helpful to you when you choose your career option after 12. So what exactly are these personas? Investigative, realistic, conventional, artistic, enterprising, social. Now who are investigative students? Investigative students are always those who would ask questions. Even if it is crystal clear to them, they would still have something in their mind. I know when I speak, when, I, when I'm giving you these examples, students attending this session would be thinking in their mind, yeah, he's speaking about that. He's, he's speaking about Keshav. He's speaking about Amar. He's speaking about Rahul. Yeah, that's how you are observing. You know, you are someone who's seeing it happen in front of your eyes. But you know what? We are all running for those marks. We are all, we are all trying to. And that's where I was very happy when this year the government said that, you know, 12th class marks, we're not giving you admission on the on the basis of saying you go and crack an entrance examination. And that is where my problem starts because that entrance examination should also be something which, you know, in the in, in the later half of the session, I'll tell you that how it should have been, and I don't know how it's going to be. Anyway, artistic. Now that could be one student where if I am or if a, if, if a max faculty is teaching algorithm inside the class, is teaching, say, uh, uh, trigonometry inside the class. This guy would be sitting inside the classroom and he'll be making a doodle, making a doodle by the name of the teacher. You know, the teacher could be called as Sheila and he's creating Sheila. He's writing Sheila as, as he's creating Sheila as a doodle. And in a very, in, in a very, many, in a very stylish manner, he's written her name. You know what? This guy is artistic. He is zero interested in this inside this class because probably he's not able to imbibe it. Now our curriculum is as such that it, it, it pushes us to learn everything you have to be because it somehow fails to recognize these kind of things. This student, if he ends up in a design school, can create one of the best ever designs, I feel. So I travel a lot. So I go to Kolkata uh, as in West Bengal and I also go to uh, Kerala. I find some of the best students in terms of arts. You know, you go through the streets, you'll see graffiti all over. You go to the colleges, there are art sessions which are happening. Believe me, it's, 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 a totally, it's a totally different world altogether when you go to these two states, West Bengal and Kerala. And they are culturally also very interlinked. You know, the communism is not the only thing which, which, which unites them, nor even food habits. But even then, you know, if you see that there are a lot of, lot, lot of persona of people which, which probably they are both living in a coast. I'm just joking, but it's it's probably that both of them are living in a coastal area, and that is why they are so imbibed. But then, if you see people that are very artistic in their demeanor, you watch Kerala movies, and you will find out that they are not the run of the mill movie which most of the Bollywood people make. You know, no remake song, nothing. They will come out with some social issue, and they'll they'll come out with something very different. As in, look at Drishyam. You know that movie. There are so many other movies. Similarly, if you go to West Bengal also, the movies are very different. You will not have a hero who is, you know, kicking uh, villains out and at the end of it, he's being declared as, yeah, he's the best. On the other hand, they have some mysterious movies. They have some artistic movies because that's how probably the education of the social structure is. And that's why more and more artistic people come out of there. That I, I, I do not mean to say that in other parts of our, in, our, our country, people like this are not there. But yes, they're artistic. That's the kind of persona which a student has. And when he's going through school, probably the teachers are not even looking at him. Because again, you cannot blame teachers also, because they also have to, have to complete a syllabus given by CBSE. Social. We all have such kind of kids as our friends or, or, or people as our friends who are very good in their social connect. That guy who's friends with almost everyone, he's so good that he can even go and talk to strangers. He's someone who, can, who will amaze you with his 
with his persona, though, you know, it, it's not about looks here. I'm again saying it's not about looks. It's about how he behaves. He might be the one the teacher would push whenever it's upon public speaking because his social connect and his social behavior is very good. He is not just connected with seniors. He's connected with everyone. That's one of those persona. Enterprising. Now, this guy is excellent. He's so enterprising. You give him an idea and he'll make it happen. You tell him that, okay, yeah, let's plan a Goa trip. <laughs> and he might be the only one who will go. <laughs> he doesn't want anyone or else he will take everyone and he'll make that happen. And that is something which is called as enterprising persona. A person who has that vision and who can make that happen. And believe me, not everyone has that passion. You all may want to have a new year party, but then you'll think, Are, who will do that here? Come on, let's leave it. The investigative guy would go and question everyone on that. You Do you think we should be celebrating? It, it's just a problem. Police will come, auntie, police will call, blah, blah, blah. You know, all, all those things. Artistic guy, on the other hand, will say, yeah, see, leave me. I need to think about certain things. The social guy would say, oh, I have so many party calls. I need not. But this might be one guy who will who's so enterprising that he'll, he'll make it happen and all these kind of people will come and join him at the end of the day. You know, that's, that's called as enterprising person. Conventional people who don't have frills attached, who are very conventional in the thinking. They have been brought and, uh, you know, they have, been, they have been brought up by their parents in such a manner that they are very conventional in their approach. They will go the way the tide. And generally, these are the students who go for engineering. I'm, I'm not blaming anything here, but I'm saying these are the students who are so singularly minded that they will say, we'll take conventional, whatever people do, wherever the herd goes, we are going there. Realistic. Now, this is some of those, those personas I really like. Because they are very realistic. Marks don't matter. Nothing matters. Knowledge matters to them. They'll sit inside the class and they'll just make sure that only the best part is with them. Rest all is bakwas. And believe me, these guys go really, 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 really high in their life because they are very realistic. They know what life is. They know everything about it. Uh, they see their friend go, getting into a relationship. He'll go and tell them, you're wasting your time. This is a time for us to enjoy why do you want to get into a relationship and spoil your life? Let's be realistic, you know. So I, I may, might have opened up a Pandora box here and people might be looking at hey, What did he say? Very easy against the relationship. See, it's just an opinion which I gave. So, but then realistic people are like that. They, they believe in the real stuff of life. They look beyond the obvious. These are the kind of personas which you can see in and out of what you call as your, as your web. Maybe some of them are missing in your class, but more or less in your life, you might have met people like that. And believe me, career options or else your, your, your entire uh, you know, student personality is something which is somewhere in and out of this entire web which I created. I'm not saying that one is submissive, the other is dominating. No. It entirely depends upon how you look at these things. And no one can alter these things also, believe me. No one can alter the, these things also. Because you are what you are. And believe me, there is enough scope for people of these, these kinds to go ahead and create a living or else make living for people, right? So moving on further, student type, if you ask me, out of all the structure which I created, comes these kind of types of students, academic oriented, people oriented, and then finally creative mind oriented. This is the kind of orientation which you would have when you get out of your school. Now, when you try to create a career for yourself, be very, very careful that what you are choosing, where you are going. If you're academically oriented, yes, you should go ahead and do engineering because it requires a lot, a lot of studying. You have to be into academics. You have to study a lot. So my brother, he cracked the IIT. I remember when I used to go to sleep, he was studying. When I wake up in the morning, he would be studying. And I was like, God damn it. I'm not doing it because I'm not that studious. You know, I was the youngest in the home. So I was like, I cannot study. So that's why I never even had that dream, though it was getting imposed on me. But I said, I'm not academically oriented. But yes, I was academically oriented, which I realized later in life that it was not max and every other thing which interested me. But on the other hand, it were the theories and it were the researchers, etc., which which which, which really, you know, which I liked. People oriented, those people who have heavy orientation about talking to people, interacting with people, you know, um, like I say, the show the social butterflies uh the other is creative minded people they are the ones who are creatively you know and now these three 
uh, orientations are something which you might have in your life. Now, talking about business schools or what kind of orientation do you require to get into business schools, I would say these three are important. Academic orientation, not on the higher side. I again, repeat, not on the higher side, but yes, you have to do a lot of reading. And that reading is also something which is very interesting. The reading is not about formulas. The reading is not about many things which people get scared about. The reading is about business. When you ask me business, the business dimensions have changed. They have changed to such extents, my dear students, you won't believe it. I, I'm very sure you all might have heard about this guy called a Steve Jobs, right? Steve Jobs, huge, big person. You know, what was his education? He never did an MBA. He never did anything to do with engineering. You know, he went to Stanford. He gave that famous commencement speech also, but he was a dropout. But then, but then, you know what? He has a video on YouTube, which you should go and look at, where he specifically says that after running his company for a long while, he realized for leadership positions, he is going to hire only people who have studied humanities. Can you believe it? Not business management. He says humanities. People who have done humanities can only lead his company. And he was very clear about it. And people were amazed. What is he saying? Google was amazed. Bill Gates was amazed. What, what, what the hell is he speaking about? But then he explained. He said, see, my products are for the people. I need to have those people at leadership positions who know people, who understand history, who understand how the world is going to change, and who do not sit in my AC cubicles. Rather, they go out, they research, they look at the needs of the people and advise me how to create a product. Yes, for business management, I'll hire MBAs and business people who can manage my business. But when it comes to the top management, it should be people from humanities who should work with me and who should tell me how a product has to be created. Go and watch this video on YouTube. You will shake from top to bottom. And that is one of the reasons you won't believe it. He said it. People did not take him seriously, but he turned it around for them. He launched a product called as iPod, which literally threw out Sony from the market. Sony used to have a product called as Walkman. A Walkman was very interesting. It was, again, a music device for which you want, you should have Sony's batteries, you should have Sony's cassette, you should have Sony's device, you should have Sony's earplug, and many things which were manufactured by Sony. Apple, what did they do? They just came out with one small product, this tiny product, which had, which did not want a cassette. Yes, there was earplug which was acquired, but yes, that's it. Earplug and a device attached to it, and you can store as many songs as you can, you know, given on the GB. But GB, it's like, you know, during those times, MP3s they hardly were in KBs. And that time he came out with GBs. Think about it, he created a disruption in the market. And he said that the people who designed this product are all from humanities, who came and told me that how to make it more convenient for people. What kind of an orientation was this? It was nothing but people orientation. It was nothing but a person going and deciding that what kind of product sets a person observing people, you know, sitting in a, probably in a pub, in a park, in, in a temple and trying to look at people in an airport and trying to look into people that what is bothering them and him coming and saying, here is the market. Now let's look at Ola, Uber, Swiggy, Zomato. Now, if you are in Bangalore, you can hear about concepts like Zepto, Dunzo. You know, what do these, guys, these people do? In economics, there is something called as convenience cost, you know, convenience cost, where they are cutting the cost of a consumer, where a consumer has to go ahead and buy something. They're making it convenient for him by making things reach him. And that has been the biggest disruption of this year, where people have done that. Now think about it, Google Play Store came later on. It was the App Store in Apple which came first. You know why? Because they said in a mobile phone, it is not just a mobile. Personalize it, give whatever you want to. Why should people open up a computer and sit? Create that thing in such a manner. Do you see how much research and what is going on here? Now the people who are doing this are all academically oriented people. 
the people who are doing it are all academically oriented people who are doing this and saying, okay, okay researchers say this, this, this. People oriented people are coming in with their researchers. And then what are creative minded people doing? Creative minded people are creating designs which appeal to people. Have you seen iPhone? There is a, there is a, there's a great interview of, a, of an engineer at, uh, uh, at Apple who says that Steve Jobs walked into the lab and said, I need to create a mobile which only will have one button. You guys won't understand it because you guys belong to the swipe generation where everything is touch screen. But when mobile phones were invented, two buttons were necessary. They had to be there. One to pick up the phone, one to cut. So that's how it was. But here was this guy walking into his library and saying, I want a phone which will have only one button. And, you know, there was an engineer who stood up and he said, impossible. This cannot happen. We need two buttons. You know, what was Steve Jobs' answer? He said, you are fired. Anyone else has a question? They were like, no. And they made it happen. iPhone was the first phone which only had one single button at the end of it. And people used to use it. And people used to use it with all the ease. You know, they designed it. Now comes the people orientation again back here where who would convince people about it that this one button does everything and that is where the genius called Steve Jobs stood out with no formal education this guy this guy can sell ice could sell ice cream to Eskimos that is how the kind of convincing skill he had he took on IBM you know with Apple when Apple was nothing IBM was a market leader it had people from Harvard Stanford Yale working for it great business minds working for it this guy Stanford dropout walks in convinces people sells more computers than anyone else at a higher price creates premium products on just his vision because he had that willingness called as people orientation where he could walk into a stage and then demonstrate his product in such a manner where people are glued to the screen and you know it, it's almost like michael jackson you know in his concert they will be glued to whatever he says and they'll be clapping they'll go all crazy about it no one person after that has done that on the screen that was his convincing skill my dear students when i when, when i'm speaking i explain to you what is business management right from the time a product is conceived to right from the time it is sold and that is what is called as business management depending upon your skill you guys have to choose where you are now what comes into your mind when i say the word management studies now guys yeah i want to do bpa it's all good they have created a curriculum principles of management economics everything is there but then you have to decide what are you what are the skills that you have? You are academically oriented, you are people oriented, or you are, are you design oriented. You have to be very clear. Are you realistic? Are you conventional? Are you, what, what kind of a person are you? And you have to decide upon doing BBA and what form of specialization are you aiming at depending upon that persona of yours, that personality trait of yours. Because now when I talk about business, business has these many wings it's divided into finance strategy human resource sales operations marketing now many many of you might not have heard about something called as operations let me give you a great news here that forbes came out with an article a research article document where they said that maximum ceos in around the top companies come out of operations department they're not from sales, they're not from marketing, not from finance. You know why? What is operations? It's about running, enterprising. You know? It's about running an organization. Because all these wings, if you can see on your screen, they're all attached to each other. If sales doesn't happen, sales has to happen, marketing has to be there. Operations make sure that market, marketing happens. Operation makes sure that finance happens. Operation makes sure that human resource happens. Strategy makes sure that all of these happen. And that is how interconnected they are. You will be managing a business, but believe me, you would be the person who would be a very pivotal uh, brick in that entire wall. What all are these and how do you determine the skills might be a question which you might be asking me. Let me answer that beautifully. Human resource, the kind of a student in, 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 inside this uh, entire, um, uh, you know, in, 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 in this audience, I'll tell you, if you have a persona who are very good at judging people, 
who has a brain where he can look at a person and tell you exactly that don't have friendship with this guy this guy is finally going to cheat you don't have any kind of relationship with this guy this guy is like this this person may in the future become this so you know there are people who are you call it as judgmental and people say don't judge don't judge but that's one of the personal personality traits and they are often right those are the people who may become a good human source uh, person a person who can hire people by judging or as creating a process of uh, hiring through which you know it, as in see i am not a hr person but whenever there is an interview in my team i do sit with a person and believe me i don't ask questions which are like hr oriented where they ask what are your expectations where do you come from you know what i do i discuss with them some political geopolitical scenario i discuss with them about uh, the best place to eat in a city and out of that i summarize what kind of a person that is because if you ask some questions about that particular job most of the time people are trying to impress but if you ask them some personal questions on what what is their opinion about probably a film star or a movie etc the real person stands out you know so you can see that i have that kind of a orientation where i do you know i discovered myself later on finance now this is something which if you are very good at numbers please go ahead and take a finance because finance is something which requires you to be very good at numbers i'm not saying math i'm saying with numbers you have to be really really good strategy the strategy is something which a lot of people have haven't have heard because they only hear about marketing sales and human resource but slowly even at iims they have started taking strategy seriously because they need people who are good at creating strategy students who have a analytical brain and a critical reasoning brain are the ones who suit in this persona because they are the ones who can create strategies now when i say strategy strategy could be anything strategy of a cricket match strategy of a football match strategy about just anything that is a person who can read research now academic orientation is very very important here because you have to be well read you have to be well researched for this job sales guys sales and marketing is different many people confuse it sales is direct door to door direct getting into the customer and making sure the product gets into the hand steve jobs was something who you who used to do marketing but he has also done a lot of sales in his life he used to go to fairs techno fairs keep his computer which was then the mac and sell it sell it in such beautiful manner that the person who would come to his counter will buy it he will make sure and it's not like you know lelo bhaiya lelo that's not how he used to do he always always took pride in his product that was what he was and people who have bought products from him would say that he will make them believe that this is one of those product which is going to change their life he used to focus more on the pros of having a computer at home and how it's going to change the very dynamics you getting that's exactly how now when i'm speaking i also need to tell you about the indian uh, companies and one of those companies which i really hold close to my heart and i'm very proud about being an indian when i speak about that that company is the tatas so shrikant datar the uh, the dean of harvard business school was a tata employee you should listen to him that how his life changed and how tata helped and how tata as an organization is built on values there was a there was a um, you know there was a, a research done by harvard again it's very very sad that in india no one did it but from harvard a person came after the taj attacks to just to find out one thing which he heard about from many of the survivors that when the attack happened when the attack happened most people would have run run away right but not the taj employees the employees of the taj were there they they could have easily left to the kitchen because through kitchen there was a door through which they could have run off but they ran to the other side and they stayed with their clients so this person came to india and tried to find out what is the hiring policy of tatas and you won't believe it tata as an organization in their human resource stress very less on your marks on the other hand it's a long process in tata you know if you want to get selected it's a long process because they are profiling you they profile you on the values which you have they profile you on your you know on your on your on your family background they profile your facebook profile they profile your friends you are with they profile your your brain in such a manner where they seek more of a person who is value driven 
and that is how they hire and that's the that's something which this this harvard professor who came to india came out as a conclusion after going through you know lakhs and lakhs of uh, you know uh, of uh, hiring for forms that's what he he concluded that's what tata is have you seen the way tata advert advertise themselves also how they do the sales they are not market grabbers on the other hand they will go in a very subtle manner they will go in a very different manner and they will project themselves in a very different manner that's the sales strategy of theirs that's the marketing strategy of theirs if you want to get into sales you have to be that person who likes numbers but when it comes to numbers i would say chasing numbers you you know ms dhoni would have been a good sales man you know because he he chases numbers right in on, on the scoreboard i'm joking on the other hand this is a person who's who's going to grip things who's making sure that things happen he will strategize but he will not drop out of the company line marketing will help sales by making sure that whatever product has been created is showcased in such a manner that people see it and they're happy again i'll go back to apple and i'll say while the entire world was focused upon uh, you know the camera and everything else apple said privacy and still it markets itself as the same that it's our phone which will make sure that your privacy is protected more than anyone else anyone else in this world it is our product which will make sure that your banking transaction etc etc you should see their ads no amir khan no ali abhat to promote their product their own product is their biggest ambassador then the messages while on the other hand oppo vivo and all everyone else did you see their marketing strategy it was very different they ran a research and they found out that what is that thing in a um, phone which is used more by indians you know what it was camera and hence they invested more in the camera so oppo and uh, vivo their phones are more expensive when the camera is better you know that's how privacy ka bhar mein because they know indians don't care about their privacy it's like indians will give away their number wherever they want on facebook there can be a quiz which says how would you look in 2030 we go there we play the game where there will be a caution which will come and say okay this is going to have access to your entire profile wherever you go track you like what do hell i don't care just show me how would i look in 2030 you know that's how we do it so they know it and that's how they sell more mobiles than apple but then apple is bought by those people who value privacy and all other things right so this is exactly what you have to have in your mind operations i'll, I'll just cover up that last one operations is something where that person the person who wants to take operation should have a good idea about getting things done so sales marketing finance human resource strategy this all happens at planning level but the one who would tell you how to do it is the operations guy what process to follow what policies to follow is something which is operations why because they are the ones who also see that quality is maintained and here is where a lot of opportunity also lies now you might have seen a lot of colleges and universities are coming out with public policy courses the very simple idea behind it is now more and more policies have to be drafted by companies also to make sure that they are legally compatible because nowadays law is also getting very powerful law is going ahead and getting into the companies and making sure that they are following those policies or not right so uh, before winding up this session i want each one student who is sitting inside this class to ask themselves these few questions yeah the first question the second are the social issues you feel strongly about do you enjoy advising and counseling people does politics fascinate you are you fascinated by the business world now if your answer is yes to all this believe me you do have a brain which is very active you do have a brain which knows where you are you just need to discover yourself you just need to have an idea about where you are what you are doing and very simply have an idea about the kind of life you want to live in the coming years and that is something which will give you such kind of a pump that everything will fall in line you go to a business school you be very clear about what your priorities are because the same course which is approved by say ugc and everywhere is being taught who are the faculties who are teaching what extra they are teaching you is also very important but ifim one of the best things which i have seen is ifim will teach you these things but it also has various other interventions 
thanks to our chairman mr sanjay padore he has he, he has a academic brain which really impressed me that is one of the I, one of the reasons why i joined this organization because he believes and he knows what is happening in the market he has a great idea about how americans and europeans are today thinking and how they have changed their pattern so when we were having a discussion he told me that in you know in in europe and us it's very clear indians go they have to study there for promotions because they are so clear that if you want to be promoted to this this is one course which you have to do and depending upon your grade you'll be promoted it's not like in india if you have served so much you will be promoted you know why because they check your proficiency and that course is not something which it, it which tests your memory it just tests at this level will you be able to do this or not and believe me it is more about not just being mentally fit it's also about being physically fit for the job and they test you on all those various levels and that's exactly what we are trying to do at ifam by all the interventions which we have when when i say intervention apart from studies we have four kinds of intervention which has sip which is social immersion program where our students go to kolar i hope all of you have heard about it thanks to kgf it's called as kolar gold fields right so there is a, a, a village called as kolar in karnataka where our students go and they and they go and work with the people there understanding their problems management issues basically in management of that particular city and they try to bring those to the classrooms they sit with their faculties they find out solutions and they take those solutions there one of those famous things which i have heard about our students there is uh, the the elephants you know the elephants were bothering these farmers there where they have sugar cane farms and these elephants would come and they will destroy the farms and they'll go off even with electrocution of campuses what these elephants would do they will come they'll pull apart that rope and when the rope falls they'll go through those ropes the ropes and you know bamboo sticks and then they will go ahead and finish it now this is something which they brought and they started uh, researching in uh, at ifam and they try, and and they were able to find out that you know these elephants and these bees they don't go up you know well well, well with each other so the solution which these students went ahead and gave to the farmers there were try to have more and more bee hives around more the bees the elephants won't bother you and it was just about telling the farmers went and they made sure that there are bee hives all around they 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 you know kind of did a farming of bee hives and this problem was taken care of but think about a student sitting for a placement interview where he talks about this thing not think about a person of steve jobs level coming for placements and as i said things are changing yes they need more and more people who have interacted with people not just the urban but also by with the rural people because the products now in india are being made for the rural india because urban india is a full of opportunities which are already over exhausted and that is where our sip works we have research incubation where our students the, the the problem was brought in here for this from the social immersion the research incubation students sit through and think about through the principles of management that how a a a a solution could be made for how a solution could be presented to this particular thing now this is something which we are doing there are pep courses which is called as personality enhancement course where people from industry they would come down to the campus and they would train our students and they would give the vision to the students that okay in 10 years this is what our requirements are going to be 10 years this is how much market share we are going to have in this now they also discuss with the students their own management issues like we are promoting this we are doing this but we may have a challenge in this area so is there someone who can help us out and believe me our students take care of it they take it to the research lab they carry their researchers there are professors who get involved with them and then through a detailed discussion they present and i'm talking about undergraduate students huh? i'm talking about undergraduate students who are doing it. they will take this issue to them and that is the reason why if you are in bangalore you look you know there is there's there's this electric uh, two wheeling vehicle which you can see around in bangalore is one of our alumni who has come out with you you know why because that's something which he could see when he was a student that in bangalore with so much traffic issues there need to be something which is a substitute for cycle which is environment friendly and which can have you know which which can be electrical and which can have pods like you know stations where people can just go they can scan through paytm through a upi and they can just drive it he came out with that concept he did it 
and look, it's a huge hit right now. You know, that's how academics and that's how an immersion of all these things have helped our students. And that's the change which we are bringing in, in our campus. I think on that note, we have come to the end of the session. Thank you, Professor Deepu Krishna, for your time and for sharing some valuable nuggets of information enthusiastically today with our students. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending the session. On thank that you note, so much. Thank you, IMS. Thank you, all the students who have been with me today, like for so many hours. I again say it's it is a great thing that you. Uh, you know, go ahead and uh, put hours discussing and listening to something like this. It just proves that how much you're serious about your life. All the best to each one of you. I'm 100% sure you're going to do exceptionally well. Please don't be in any kind of pressure. Like I said, at the end, everything pans out. Don't worry. Thank you so much, Mr. Krishna. It was really a pleasure. It was a very interesting uh, session. Yeah. I don't know about the students, but, uh, you know, I have actually enjoyed a lot by listening to you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Krishna, for actually providing us with so. Okay, he's giving a thumbs up. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, I, I'm happy that it helped you. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking our time and speaking to us and to our students. And uh, it was really a pleasure, you know, having you with us, uh, you know, with the IMS students. Thank Great you. Night. Thank you. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Bye.